and welcome to Gen Friends. I'm your host, Sherry Hudson Passy from Carolina Girl Genealogy, and we've got a fabulous panel as usual. We're so glad that you've joined us. First of all, we have Terry O'Connell. Terry has not been able to join us for a while, and we are so glad that Terry's here. And Terry is from Finding Our Ancestors. So, Terry, thank you for joining us tonight. We're so glad you're here. Thanks. I had dinner early tonight. <laughs> Good. We've missed you. <laughs> We've missed you. We have Laura Hedgecock from Treasure Chest of Memories. Hi, Laura. Hi, everybody. Good to have you here. You look so pretty in your red in your red shirt. Oh, thank you. I put it on just for the show. <laughs> We have we have Melissa Barker, our archive lady, showing her, her archives in the back, always making us jealous. Hi, Melissa. Hi, everybody. Glad to be here. So glad that you're here. Mary Kircherati from MKR Genealogy is with us with another marvelous quilt behind her. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Always Great love, to be here. Always love your quilts. We have Dan Earl, the family history guy. Hey, Dan. Hello. <laughs> How are you tonight? Doing great. Good, so glad you're here. Shelly Murphy, Family Tree Girls here. Hi, Shelly. Hi, good evening, everyone. Glad to be here tonight. Excited about our guest. Oh, I am too. And speaking of our guest, we have David Allen Lambert, who, as everybody really knows, <laughs> is the chief genealogist for, I've got to make sure I say this right, American Ancestors in the New England Historical Genealogical Society. We are so glad that you're here. Hi, Hi. Dave. I'm flattered to be here. Thanks for the invite. And yeah, it is a very long name for an organization. <laughs> <laughs> That's all good. We just want to make sure we get it right. Um, well, we, we asked you to come on tonight because we are getting ready to celebrate Veterans Day. And you are a wealth of knowledge when it comes to military records. So we thought we want to talk to you because, you know, so many of us want to honor our veteran ancestors and we want to find their records and we want to learn more about the things that they did while they were serving our country we have veterans day and our and we have memorial day and i think people get <laughs> get the two messed up a lot memorial day is to to honor those that that died while serving and veterans day is to honor those that are serving or have you know, retired from, from the military service actually we can honor anybody on veterans day but Right, so um, I wanted to do something real quick just to start off so that we don't um, run out of time. Our wonderful panelist, Bernice Bennett, couldn't be with us tonight, but she wanted me to share something really special that she found at the National Archives. A lot of times when we think about military records, that's where we go in our minds, right to the National Archives because they have so many wonderful military records. So if I can get my technology, y'all know me in technology, so let me, <laughs> let me make sure I can get this up and share it. Can y'all see that? Let me know when you can see it. Please tell me. There you go. Oh, ah, great look at this beautiful, beautiful photo that Bernice found. And this is what she said. Let me, I wrote it down to make sure that I tell you the right thing. This was a widow's pension file. And you know, not all files, uh, pension files have a photo in it. This one did. And this is um, the pension file for someone named Mel uh, Melinda Harris. She was the widow of Sam Harris, whose name, who was an alias, <laughs> Jack Williams. And this comes from um, Ascension Parish in Louisiana. He was in Company A of Regiment 17, the USC Infantry, and that's the US Colored, Serv uh, Colored um, Regiment. So um, I think that was just fabulous, the things that you can find that we can honor our ancestors with. I personally have never been able to find a, a, a photo, but then my ancestors that, for the, the Civil War pension files, they, they fought um, in the Confederacy, and th those, those files are very thin. <laughs> and yeah. So you, 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 I don't know that I've ever heard of anybody. Maybe I've somebody seen two. else. I've You've seen, seen two. two. Yeah, two I saw photos. one was a cabinet card of a fellow uh, without a shirt on uh, wow. because he had lost his arm. He wanted to sh prove that he had his arm amputated. Oh, and, and that was in a Confederate. Was, uh, yeah, he was, no, he was a Union guy. 
Oh, okay. Union, but I've only seen two union. I've looked at hundreds of pensions. And the other one was an interesting story. It's an old timer with a bowler. And he sent it to the pension office because he said, and I'm going to paraphrase it. I was able to meet Abraham Lincoln when I did guard duty at the White House. And I'm oh. sure there's a picture of me with him. If you match this picture with me now with them, I look a little bit older, but I'm just about as same as I was. <laughs> And the picture was taken like 50 years later. Oh my gosh, I love it. Well, that just goes to show because you have looked at so many pension files and if you've only found two, that what yeah. Bernice found is absolutely amazing and so rare. What, what, what a wonderful what a wonderful addition to her records and to for her family. So that was amazing. Bernice, we miss you, but thank you so much for sharing that so that we could we could show everybody the kinds of things that you could find. So who wants to who wants to start pummeling David with questions? <laughs> yeah, do you guys remember the I think it was finding your you uh, roots? Way back in the beginning with Vanessa Williams, wasn't that her? Do you guys remember that one? There was a pic the picture uh, of her ancestor was in the, and I think it was Civil yeah, it was a, War. Yeah, it was a pretty thick file. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. That was the first time I had saw somebody with a picture. With a picture. Was actually yeah. on Finding Your Roots. Yeah. yeah. That, that was wonderful. Yeah. I know photographs are great, but the, the oddest thing I ever saw um, was in a pension file, they actually included the top of the forage cap of the kepi. Um, actually, I have one, but I, can, I won't put it on. Uh, but it was that part, that, but he had written all the battles he was in, and the widow oh. sent it in to say this was his proof that oh he had been in, cut gosh. it out of the hat, that he had survived, and sent it in, and it's in the file. Oh my gosh. Oh, no. oh my gosh. That was Civil War? Civil War, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. I, I'm going to get off camera for just a second. All right. <laughs> here, we oh, here, here we go. There we go. It's like from one, the top of one of these. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he wrote it all down. Oh my yeah, gosh. The inside of the cap. Inside. He, he wrote it right inside. And wow. Then they cut the round part off and yeah. then put it in the pension file. Hmm. Wow. wow. So you just never know what you're going to find. That's very true. I'm just not that Oh, my lucky. God. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not that lucky either. Actually, I'm not either. <laughs> so, so, okay. So you know that you've got a, a veteran in your family tree. Where is the first place you're going to look? Is it depending on which war or is everybody just going to go run to the national archives first what what do you tell people to do well i mean basically what i have you do is you look at your your own family tree and then you kind of look at what people are born in certain time frames like mm -hmm. say if your dad was born anywhere between you know 1910 and say 19 27 good chance he may have been in world war ii my dad was right. born in 25 mm -hmm. but he was in world war ii but it doesn't mean that they did same thing is true with world war one you start looking at these age brackets and of course there's exceptions to the rules because you have people that are very very old and then you have ones that lied about their age my grandmother's oh, who would do that <laughs> i know exactly why would they do that and they're always blaming ladies. It's a lot of these veterans are <laughs> lying about the rings years ago because they could uh, get further into the military. Yeah, my grandmother's uncle was uh, a 16-year-old drummer boy during the Civil War. Oh, wow. And uh, so I used to tell kids when I was younger that my grandmother's uncle fought in the Civil War. They told me I was crazy. I'm like, no, it's true. So I brought my grandmother up for show and tell, and she <laughs> set the story straight. Yeah. Fun so stuff. So look at your tree first and see if you can figure out who fits in a certain fits. time frame for yeah. during the war, right? Yeah. I mean, because there have been a lot of times where I look at people's family trees and, and just looking even back to the Civil War, um, that you occasionally get people that just don't have an idea that their ancestors fought because they've just forgotten. It's, you know, we know, you know, stories of the past hundred years, but when you peel back 150 years, right. you just don't always have that family story per se right. and then you get to the revolution and you know that's why people are constantly looking for dar and sar memberships is it to find if they qualify for something because nobody quite remembers that in mm -hmm. the telephone game of the past sure so. sure absolutely and and some of us do have family stories so we've mm -hmm. got those stories and so if we want to start looking for records um say you know that you've got someone in your family that fought in world war ii 
where would you go? Where do you go to start? How do you start that process? Well, I would think in this case for World War II, I say charity kind of starts at home. So you may have like your dad or your grandparents or grandparents actually, because you know, ladies are in the service as well. Um, And you might have their discharge papers. Mm -hmm. You might have photographs, you might have documents. So use the clues that you have at home or maybe your cousin Mary has grandma stuff or grandpa (laughs) stuff. And then you want to start on the state level because of a fire in 1973, the U S army and U S army air Corps, Mm -hmm. those records were burned. Uh, Not all of them, but a great amount of there are burnt files that survive. Um, But the adjutant general's office in the state you're from had to keep a copy of the DD 214, their honorable discharge. And that is usually on file on the state level. And of course, Mm -hmm. now that ancestry has a variety of different databases, out that are available online uh, for the uh, World War II draft registrations. Those help a little bit too. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean that if you've got a registration to draft, it mean to actually serve though. I mean, that's one right. of the problems with the World War I draft because the last draft was done about a month before the war ended. Right. And like if all those guys went in, we would have had a lot of boats going over to Europe, just turning around. Mid- turning around. Atlantic. Exactly. Yeah. Mary, you had a question? Yeah, I had a question. Um, so, the Navy records, I know I've been able to get World War II Navy records, mm-hmm. but are the DD-214s um, also on fi- for Navy personnel? Mm-hmm. Would that be at the state? Okay. Yeah, my my uncle was uh, was at, on D-Day, and uh, he, I have his DD-214 from Massachusetts. And uh, again, the other branch of the service that survived is the Marine Corps. Uh-huh. And then, of course, is Merchant Marine Records as well. So it's really the U.S. Army and U.S. Army Air Corps the precursor to the Air Force for the World War II era, and of course, later records too, right on through about Vietnam. But um, that's why it's so important to write down the stories of the veterans mm-hmm. we know. And right now, America has their oldest veteran is a fellow who lives in New Orleans, Louisiana. He just turned 111 years old right. last month. Wow. Yeah. And he, uh, that's amazing. Yeah, we just talked about him on Extreme Genes for the next uh, taping. And uh, Lawrence Brooks, that's his name. Okay. I like had it here on the screen. But uh, oh, yeah, he's 111. Perfectly yeah. well. We'll put that and link Af- in our. Yeah. yeah. African American veteran. And he huh. served in New Guinea uh, in the Philippines in World War II. Wow. And uh, relayed a story Whoa. about throwing barbed wire out of a C 47. Uh, transport that he was on because one of the engines went out and uh, I said I don't know about you but I think I'd be more scared about being on the ground if somebody strung out barbed wire <laughs> exactly the, let me ask you a quick question about that um, D, did you say it was a D D214 that's not coming out yes what what is on that what kind of information is on that form typically I mean it's going to vary but uh, typically, you get the name, date of birth, place of birth, next mm-hmm. of kin, uh, next your of kin. your service number. Okay. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. You're going to get any uh, awards that were given to you, like if you got Asiatic Theater or you got the you know European huh? Theater uh, medal, uh, any battle mm-hmm. stars that you got on okay. in the Purple Heart. Uh, in some cases, it has some medical things like blood type and things oh, like wow. that. Oh, wow. Yeah, identifying factors like your height, your weight, your eye color. Okay. And things okay. like that. Yeah. Are those available for World War World War One or just World War II? Um, they're available for usually World War One and World War Two. Okay. At least I could speak to that in Massachusetts. Oh. And I think that it's going to vary what's on the cards because in World War One there was no standard form that they were using across the board for these. Mm-hmm. Uh, so sometimes they're cards that were just typed up. Uh, in Michigan, they actually have, I think it was the Red Cross did an exit interview with World War I veterans. Uh, the Michigan State Archives has these amazing interviews of World War I veterans that were done shortly after the war. Wow. Um, I saw those. And I, I might be getting... Wait, where, where are those? The Michigan State Archives. Archives. Yeah. Wow. I, you know, when he, he spoke about Red Cross, that's mm-hmm. another place genealogists need to tap in. There's a whole ex-volunteer, a whole <laughs> historical database. And they were over in Europe and my World War II cousin who was over there, they had some social, you know, one night oh, yeah. over in England. Mm-hmm. And I've got a picture. He was being interviewed by BBC and this, that, and other. But, but I was able to track back with their help that it was a social function, you know. And he was killed actually over 
over in uh -huh. Germany during a bombing run. But the Red Cross has records if people ask. Is, is what I'm saying. And all, some of those stories are there. And of course, they're not far from the hospitals and stuff, too. Oh, that's so true. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. That reminded me to say and, something. And that's why the stories are so very important, because we know stories that may have been told to us by our parents or our grandparents. And especially mm -hmm. since if the records are gone, mm -hmm. you really are the last link in the chain for a lot of this. I mean, when you figure right. that the average age for a World War II veteran is 95 years to 111 years old. I mean, there are some right. younger guys too, but nobody's under 90 that I know of. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not now. Well, Laura and then Mary. Okay, so my question goes is World War One as well. And if you've applied for records and you've got notification that they don't exist anymore, they were burned, mm -hmm. where do you go? Where would be the first thing? Where would you go? The state. I would first start with the state. The uh, state what, was it the army? branch both of them were army i have my um my husband's great grandfather was here in michigan and my great my grandfather was in virginia mm -hmm. yeah if you just contact if you just do a simple google of the adjutant general's office and whatever state that they would have come back to um that is where you're gonna find uh, the oh the university. one they came back to not the one from where they right because ah, occasionally I gotcha. they may have started someplace and then mm -hmm. settled in afterwards so i find it, it okay is, and it, it's usually one in the same shirt it's not always be different right. but i always find to be safe always check where they came back to and okay. it's another thing that a lot of people don't realize is for world war one uh you have the chance to automatically become a citizen and you'll find those type of uh, military uh, naturalizations on fold three now. Ah, right. Okay. And a lot of times people say, my, my grandfather's from Massachusetts. I said, but where did his unit get out? And they said, New York. And you check and sure enough, that's where they are. So, yeah, yeah cause I, I've got, I've got one that it, he, he went in in Ohio, but came back to South Carolina. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in my mind, I'm looking for all this, Although I found some information in South Carolina newspapers, but I'm looking for the military records more <laughs> in Ohio. And okay, I've got to. Yeah, it, and some of them have compilations, like on American Ancestors. So we have like mm -hmm. over a billion searchable records. And right off, um, we have like Vermont and World War One and Maine and World War One because the Adjutant General's Office published these lists. Mm -hmm. So you get sometimes very biographical. And of course, there's regimental histories that can be written, uh, like the old. Yankee division in Boston, which was a lot of the groups that went over, they have books that usually have listings of those who died, uh, pictures, right. and then Gold Star Mothers. Oh, yes. They had a tour in 1930 of all the ladies who lost a son in the war, and they mm -hmm. sent them over. And these about Gold them. Star Mother books are amazing because you get pictures sometimes of the sons and the biographies. Ah. It's touching stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mary, you had another question? Yeah, um, I have a guy I'm trying to research that um, was on a B-17 crew in World War II, mm -hmm. and I have, um, I've tried to get whatever records that they had in St. Louis for his file, but there wasn't much, only a few letters he had written um, in the 70s to them. Mm -hmm. What about um, VFW? I know he belonged to a VFW chapter, and then, um, or VA records, he had some yeah. health yeah. issues and died quite young, so... Family Search has the VA Veterans Administration records now online. They're um, very involved in how to get them. If you want to drop me a note, I can get you a hyperlink right to them. Um, I've used them a few times, and it's good for anybody from even like the Indian Wars, uh, Spanish-American War, right on through to World War II. Um, and these are like cards when they were actually t getting VA services. Um, the Veterans Administration um, actually holds a lot of records that you wouldn't even think they might have. In fact, any pension that was awarded, for instance, for the Civil War after 1934 to the Union forces, the VA still has the files. They're in Kansas City now, but they're not with the National Archives. So if you see like an XC or a C on the index card for a pension in the Civil War, that's the case. Um, but yeah, if you contact... Um, the other thing is to check with Archives 2 in um, College Park, Maryland, because they have a lot of World War II records as well. And it may be on the air base that he was connected with. Um, that would be useful. VA, um, I'm sorry, not VA, VFW and American Legion, uh, there are membership forms 
that some of the states would still have. Um, it's going to, again, it's going to vary like anything else. You know, did they just fill out a little index card, then pay their 10 bucks and became a member? Or did they actually fill out a long form like mm -hmm. you get for something like for Confederate veterans or like the Grand Army of the Republic, where they actually had to fill out a form and prove that they were actually a veteran? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that'd be uh worthwhile. Shelly Shelley and Laura have been talking in the chat about the transportation records that are on Ancestry mm -hmm. um, for World War I. Those are, those are really great records. I was able to find a clue for my step-great-grandfather step, step um, great -grandfather, because we know nothing about him. We've got his discharge papers, but he listed his next of kin, which got me all excited but as i researched her that i mean it's just like how could her name be this so but anyway so <laughs> at well, least it's something well uh, what's interesting about the one that i have and it's for my gr uh, grandfather is it listed they're they're returning i didn't find one going mm -hmm. it's the returning coming back from france and it tells them when David mentioned about, you know, make sure you check because where they left might not be right. you know, where they came back. And they, the ship, it says when they left, I found a picture just the other day. There was a celebration when they're leaving France. So I, with the oh. ship name, which is matches on the record. But you know what I found on there? What's that? A wife that we didn't know about. <laughs> Oh my. <laughs> no, seriously, and I haven't figured it out yet. This is a challenge. But it says, you know, like your emergency contract. Yeah. Because it had the information where they were going to and they were coming back into New York. Yeah. And, and it said what base they were going to and everything. And then when it, the number, the service number matched. That's why yeah, I that's know, how you knew. Yeah. Yeah. But there's this wife that lives in <laughs> Dayton, Ohio, and is like, well, who is this? And he's coming back something 1919, but he marries my grandmother in 1920. And it was like, whoa, wait a minute. So I've, I've got to figure that out. i got to figure that out. Never a dull moment in genealogy. That's <laughs> Never sure. a dull moment. Dan, you... you, know, you Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, David. I was just going to say with the transportation records, the other thing to know is that the deck logs, like especially for all of the um, the Liberty ships that brought troops over. Now, my dad and I uh, was Army Engineer Construction Battalion in Europe, and mm -hmm. I know the Liberty ship he came over on. And these are, and they're not going to say everything about your relative in it, but if you want to know longitude and latitude where they were on a specific day when they were going over to Europe or they were in the Navy, and mm -hmm. you can get the deck log for your ancestor's boat. Mm -hmm. Like my uh, friend who was on the Ticonderoga and it was hit by a kamikaze on a certain uh, date. And he knew yeah. it. I was able to get that deck log from College Park, Maryland on that page because he couldn't remember the name of some fella that had died oh. and that he helped try to save him. And he was getting on in years and they mm -hmm. sure enough gave me the sheet and he knew that name and the tears oh, came to his goodness. eyes. So you can get some of these other replacement records. So it just depends mm -hmm. on what you're looking for. Um, Dan, you were saying that you had a similar story and then we'll go to Mary because Mary wants to show us something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, similar to, to what Shelley was saying, but I, um, I got the, the widow's pension file for my great, great grandmother, her husband, my great, Great grandfather was a was an army veteran during the Civil War, and uh, and her her packet was remarkably thick, and so I was like, oh, I wonder what's going on there. <laughs> they denied her pension because she couldn't prove that her first husband, which we didn't know about, <laughs> uh, had passed away in upstate New York oh my uh, before uh, civil recordings of of deaths. And there was letters that she had written to anybody that she remembered from their very short stint in that town. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and and all these responses that came back like we have no clue who this lady is um, and like yeah. nobody remembered her or her <laughs> husband like they were there for a very short they they had moved oh, down gosh. from Canada and they were there for a very short period of time and there's no burial record there's nothing oh wow um, and then attached to it was a note about her son's adoption uh, to this other family and so I had no clue because on oh. all of the records that I had, it said that her marriage to my ancestor was her first marriage and that she had, wow. she was the mother of three children, which is the number of children she had with my ancestor, but she was the mother of four children because she had one that she had with her first husband oh, um, wow. and that she later put up for adoption. 
Um, and so all of that was in was in that pension file. So there's oh. lots of interesting genealogy <laughs> stories to be had in those. So you know, it's funny. A lot of the uh, the indexes, like there's two different indexes. Is the T288 for union veterans, and that is alphabetical. But if you go to the T289, which is on fold three, that's the organizational. So you can get sometimes the date of death and the place of death on that card, which isn't on the one that's on ancestry. Um, the fun thing is that a lot of people look at a pension application, it will say application, but then it will say certificate. Like Dan says, that's a thick file. You look at it and say, oh, he didn't get the pension. The best part of I love is that is that we'll put down the type of file. I had somebody years ago when I first started in this and I, we were in National Archives in DC. I was fresh working for an EHGS person. I gave them all the information, go in and get it and you can look at your pension. They came back and said, John, I don't know why you wanted me to look at it. It said that the person pension was invalid. And I'm like, no, no, oh, oh, invalid. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it was a 200 plus page pension. <laughs> So you never know what wow. you're going to find. Wow. That's amazing. Mary, what did you want to show us? So, um, I have a picture and I don't know if this is going to work or not. Um, this is a guy that came back from World War II. Um, this here he was, is with his father who was in the okay, we're just in that. We're just seeing your... You don't have it open. Um, yeah. Just okay, click on it, it just, and see if it'll open. Well, I did, and it didn't work. So, did you select um, it? Oh, you know what it is? You could be sharing the wrong screen where it opened up. Yeah, at the yeah. Just That's, make sure you yeah. click on the. Is that, does that one do it? There, there you go. go. Oh, there you go. Oh, you go. Cool. Look at that. Wow. Um, the okay. So this guy, I'm interested. His father was actually in the Irish Guards in World War One, and then mentioned in Rudyard Kipling's book. Oh. Um, and this is the son who served in World War II. The father served in World War II as well. Um, but look, that's a Canadian badge on his shoulder. I recognize that. And that's a, he's an engineer. Dad served the, in the Canadian forces in World yeah. War II. He was born in Ireland, served uh, with Irish Guards in World War I, and then came to the U.S. That's a great um, picture. And married and, and had a son here. So this is... Um, it's a Christmas photo for his sister in Ireland. Um, but it, uh, this guy left the service in, I think, September or October of 45. So it was taken, you know, sometime in the fall of 45. Look at his hand. Can you see? Yeah. That oh. was my first thought when I saw That's that. That's my, me too. Okay. Uh, I thought he's lost, uh, he's lost a I hand. I think he's lost a hand. I think this well, guy was able a, to find a Mepco report for that. Yeah. yeah. Um, this guy was a, um, a B-17 or co-pilot. Um, and so he could not have served as a co-pilot, obviously, with only one hand. Um, and well, I, I, don't know I think about he that. might have lost it. Um, well, um, I think he might have lost it in the POW camps. Mm. Um, he spent oh. 10 months in a POW camp. Mm -hmm. Um, and it could have been frostbite or a cut and had to be amputated. Mm -hmm. um, so this is what I'm really trying to find more about. Do you think I could find somewhere a medical file? I mean, I've got, he's the one I've tried to get his um, personnel file. Louis would, yeah, right. St. Louis will have that, that they Maybe. should have that. Have, no, have you hired a researcher that can go to St. Louis, of course, post-COVID, of course, yeah, there. I'm gonna. I'll have you talk to um. And Sherry knows Melanie McComb. Mm -hmm. Melanie hired uh, a researcher in St. Louis to go out, and they actually went in and had files pulled. Yeah. Um. And it's not, of course, you know, in this case, uh, he's a pilot, so he's in the Army Air Corps, and it's so that may not be there. But any medical would be separate occasionally. It's not always in the personnel jacket. So the, okay. there's day reports and things like that. And of course, if you could find out um, what unit he was with, another great place is the U.S. Army War College down in Carlow, Pennsylvania, where I've lectured before. It's a great repository. Mm -hmm. And because it was under the Army back then, they may have uh, typed up unit histories that may add something ah. to it. I mean, Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was in the 447th bomb group. I've got a lot of information on that, but um, but you think his medical file would be in a different location? It than could his? be in a different location in St. Louis. I mean, it, it wouldn't hurt to file check because usually what people are requesting is the regular personnel file, mm -hmm. and you can just say because and also because he was a POW, 
there may actually be a separate file for that as well. Right. Yeah. Oh, Mary, you'll have to keep us posted on that and one. And <laughs> I recognize what he's got on his jacket. He's wearing that. Ah. Uh, that's, okay, yeah. that's a sterling silver World War II set of wings. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Melissa, you said you have a question? Wait, you skipped me. Oh, did I? Oh, Laura, I'm so sorry. Sorry. Sorry, Melissa. I'm going to let Laura go. Sorry, Laura. <laughs> uh, I wanted to go back to World War One. One thing David said about looking at home, I think that's so important. Like, my... I have a box, I think it looked like maybe it was a box that things were shipped in World War I that my grandpa had taken things back with him. And in it, he had pictures like him with some of the, his other soldiers, but there's also a photograph of a ship and he wrote on the back the name of the ship and this is what I came home on. Oh, oh wow. Gosh. So those <laughs> kinds of things that might be around your house and are in a box, those are definitely worth looking for. You know what uh -uh. I'm talking about. They're almost like postcards, right, Dave? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then you get people who keep stuff like this. I mean, this is a German shell from World War I. Oh, my god. Somebody goodness. brought home as a souvenir. Occasionally, they're made into trench art. But I know exactly what you're talking about. This, huh. yeah. yeah, and he, um, he was hired because he was a mechanic, out of, and he had been here in Detroit, but he was assigned to a unit that didn't have motor cars. Oh. So he ended up taking care of horses. Mm -hmm. And he has mm -hmm. like the equivalent of a Swiss Army knife that was for caring for horses' hooves and stuff. Oh. <laughs> That's it's really cleaning cool. out. Yeah. That is really cool. Really so, yeah, cool. Yeah, the stuff that you might find in your house is just yeah. super cool for exactly the history. Okay, back to the <laughs> question from <laughs> Melissa. <laughs> Um, this is a, a little bit more um, recent, recent, anyway. My father was a 20-year Air Force veteran. Um, he just passed away uh, almost a year ago, the day after Thanksgiving right. last year. And um, we, of course, have gone through you know, the house and everything. And my father kept every piece of paper during his 20 years in the military. So I'm grateful for that because I You're don't know military. what was saved at St. Louis and not mm -hmm. saved. So I have lots of records all the onion skin I have, mm -hmm. I have everything all of his accommodations i have everything all of his certificates i mean this is a certificate here from from his successfully completed the ojt training whatever something from well, can you pull uh, that up let's see it yeah. yeah i'm looking at it for a date oh january 26 1970 yeah my dad kept all of his too melissa that's great okay. yeah but what i found i found something extremely interesting i found a transcript in these records of what i believe was a a tv show part of a tv show my father was named man of the hour and it was on the Air Force Network, AFN. <laughs> and he would, have been in, he would have been in Germany, actually, at the time. He was stationed at Hahn Air Force Base in Germany. And so I'm actually on the hunt of looking for the actual footage. Oh. You know, that's, I'm not sure where I would go to uh, find that. You know, I, have you contacted the Air Force as far as their archives? Because, I mean, the Air Force... I, have, is, I haven't contacted any because I've just received these records in the last month or so. Hang on a second. Won't I worry. would also think about Red Cross. Yep. Don't forget but, them. I They're had the actual powerful. transcript of the, and I don't know if it was a show or if it was just, at first I thought it was radio, but with the transcript were actually some slide negatives of him. Oh my gosh. Receiving his award. And there's, and this, this oh. transcript talks about showing the photographs. And so then I'm thinking, okay, now this is actually footage that they did on something. Mm -hmm. Wow. Contact the National Museum of the Air Force out in Ohio. Uh, I think it's in Riverside. And they have, yeah, Riverside, Ohio. That might be where you might find it because I would imagine they have some sort of an audiovisual archives. Mm, okay. That would be great. Yeah, I would love to find that because um, I never knew about this. Um, you know, it's, it's very <laughs> he never told you he was on Air Force TV, huh? <laughs> no. No, um, you know, my father and I, he was very open with me. He talked to me about everything. And this is another thing about our military ancestors, the ones that we know about, our, our mm -hmm. fathers, our grandfathers and our grandmothers or whoever was in the military. You know, we think that mine was always open with me about everything. We, talk, we could talk about anything. But one time I did ask him a few years before he passed, I asked him, I said, well, did you have any high sec security clearance? And he said, yes, I did. 
Um, and I said, oh, really? I said, well, what kind of projects did you work on? And he said, I can't tell you. And I thought he was kidding. <laughs> I, you know, I'm thinking, oh, okay, dad, you know, I said, well, no, really, what did you work? And he looked at me very seriously. And he says, I can't tell you. And I'm thinking any project that he had been working on is way mothballed by now. I said, you know, but he took an oath. Yeah, I right. did get out of him that he, because uh, he was in computer operations when computer op computer operations had just begun. Mm -hmm. And so he worked, he did, I did get out of him that he worked on, I think it's called the SR-71 plane. Oh, okay. The yeah. Blackbird? Yes, the Blackbird. Yeah. He did yeah. work on that. And what's interesting and fun for me, because cleaning out their house these last few months, I found some of these. He used to bring home punch cards, and I would color on them as a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> and so and i don't understand i don't know how punch cards work but i used to wonder as i got older i thought i wonder what kind of secret information is on these punch cards but i found some in their house as we were cleaning it out oh, so i've no. kept them and only i know what this is going to mean to anybody is what punch cards so i used to call them punch cards <laughs> so i'm trying to find this footage um you know and so i'll contact the museum and see what i can find out I have a friend uh, who we work with, and she uh, writes for uh, the Weekly Genealogist. Her name's Valerie Boudreau, and her dad was a World War II ace. He shot down an experimental German jet in World War II, and because of it, he was on the Coca-Cola radio show, <laughs> and they sent him a, I don't know if it was a metal disc or a wax copy disc of the interview on, uh, but they have the record of him being interviewed back in 44 or 45. Oh my gosh, that's precious to have. Oh my yeah. goodness. Oh my goodness. Terry, you said you've got something archival you wanted to share? I have a ton of stuff from my uncle who was, he did Air Force and Army in the 60s. And all I really know is he was in Japan. And I've kind of went through this stuff maybe about a month ago. And as I pulled it out to talk about, I found more stuff in it. Like, <laughs> I don't know if you can, like, it's his, his little picture. Like, it's oh. the, you know, oh, the negative. negative. Yeah. That's cool. But, I mean, within here, he, this, he, this man kept everything. Like, all the <laughs> stubs, like, that are filled out are in here. Wow. And he must have been a genealogist. You yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Look, he, he didn't do anything, okay? Like, after the service, like, that was his life. He did nothing no. really after no. that. <laughs> um, but it has, like, this one list of all the men that were shipped, and he went to Germany. Nobody ever told me he went to Germany first. Um, but there's a lot of great things in here. There's, um, he didn't finish high school. He lied about his age to get into the service, hmm. which is why he did two branches. Um, there's his tests that he took, how many times he had to take it to pass to get his GD. Um, <laughs> these certificates that he got, some professional photos. Um, he was a medic in the service. Huh. The professional photos of him working. Oh, wow. Um, I'd show them, but the back is marked that, you know, you have to have permission to show them. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, That's old permission. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> the last thing I need is anybody government saying anything. But yeah. in here, there's a, que a question ear that he had to answer about. Wow. So, I, don't, I don't know. But if we get together in April like we're supposed to, I think I'm just bringing the file for you to go through <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to see it. Absolutely. Um, so you can just go through it and tell me what the heck it all means. <laughs> what it all means. You know, and that's, I, I think that a lot of times we do have family stories about our ancestors, and then we get these records, and a lot of times, you know, we get more detail to put in the family stories, and then, and sometimes we find out our family stories weren't exactly true, like we've talked about. Um, I know with my grandfather who died on the island of Peleliu during World War II, my mother grew up with a story that he was blown up by a hand grenade, you know, but I got his records and he was shot. <laughs> I mean, so all this oh. time it was, a to I mean, he still died, but it was a totally different story. So it's really, really important that we, we find the paperwork to see what else we can, we can glean about, about our ancestors. Um, and Laura, you said you've got one more, you've got another question. You're, you're muted. More of a philosophical question for okay. the group. My father-in-law served during the Korean conflict. He was in the Air Force. He was a chemist. He spent the war in Alaska. The people would call, go up and test the air, the air to see if there was any testing going on in the Soviet Union, and they'd bring uh -huh. it down to the labs. Anyway, he, uh, he's passed now, but he never wanted to be honored on Veterans Day. He felt like that belonged to the combat soldiers. Oh. 
So now that he's gone, I mean, do I continue to honor that his, his, his desire not to be grouped in with the people that saw contact, but I feel like he did give an, an important part of his life for our, you know, Uh, you know, you have the same thing that went on with my dad. My dad was army engineer construction battalion. So he, the, the most he was deal, dealing with was, you know, the chances of being shot at while they're building air bases. Um, and he didn't want a VA pension. He didn't want anything like that. He says the real heroes are the ones that died. But when he died, they presented me with a flag mm-hmm. and there is a, a flag marker on his grave mm-hmm. and every Memorial and Veterans Day, there's a new flag there. And you know what? As long as you keep his memory alive, his service is important. And I, exactly. I don't care if you're the Rosie the Riveter helping build, you know, shells. That was part of the war effort. I right. Mean, and it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, if he was the person that detected that was a test going on, you know, how, how amazing that would have been to mm-hmm. that, that was your dad. But you know what? Something didn't happen, but he still was there. Right. All, all of their service is important. Exactly. And you need to remember them on Veterans Day. Dan. Yeah. So, so I've got sort of two, two ends of the, the same thing. So my, my grandfather served in World War II, my dad's dad, and he, he was a professional jazz musician in the Detroit area before the war. And so when he was drafted, um, he just raised his hand and said, hey, I'm a professional jazz drummer. Is that going to help with anything? And they're like, private or I'll come with us. And he, he, he served his country by playing yeah. in a jazz band for troops all, oh, all, yes. all up and down the, the Pacific Definitely. Coast. And, and he, he was proud of that service. Mm-hmm. He never really felt like he needed to say, I, I wasn't a veteran because he, he felt like everybody was contributing, just like the women back home were contributing. Sure. More effort. Um, now, I've mentioned, I think, before on the show, my dad was a funeral director, um, and he had a gentleman that, that worked for him. Um, that also served in World War II. So that was one of the wonderful things about growing up in that funeral home is a lot of the guys that worked part-time for my dad were World War II veterans. And so I got, I got a chance to talk to them. And this one guy, um, I was writing a report in, I think, middle school on the Battle of the Bulge. And my dad had mentioned that this, this guy had served and, and, and was at the Battle of the Bulge. And he's like, maybe you should go talk to him. And so I went and talked to him. And at first he's like, I, I don't want to talk about that. Um, you know, he's like, yes, I served there, but I, I, I really don't want to talk about that. And then I was like, okay, no, you know, I'm not going to try to hurt your feelings or anything like that. But a boy, you know, in a typical middle school boy, I was like, boy, that would really make my report great though. And, he's like, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then the next day he came by and he's like, he goes, I want you to sit down. He's like, I'm going to tell you everything that happened because I've never told my wife and I've never told any of my children. Wow. And, uh, wow. and then for, for an hour or more, he just told me what it was like to be a 20 year old kid at the battle of the bulge and thinking that you're never going to come home again. Mm -hmm. And just, and was just, he was just, he was emotional. I was emotional. I still Mm -hmm. get emotional. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, But he's like, never tell anyone. That was, that was a brutal battle. My mother's lost her only cousin. He was 24 years old and uh, he was, he was a medic and somebody was in another tank and got injured and, when he got into the tank, he wasn't in there very long and a Panther division came by and blew up the tank. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, mm. He's over in Normandy, uh, not Normandy, I'm sorry, Belgium at Henry Chappelle Cemetery. One of, that's one of my bucket list things to go over there and pay yeah. respects. Oh, wow. Yeah. Dan, I, Dan, I wanted to um, pick up on something that you said. You to, he, he said not to tell the mm. stories that he told you. So Yeah, he, he said you, that I could... He said that I could I could talk about it a little bit in the report, just like yeah. this is what it was like in general terms. Uh huh. But he he asked specifically that I not share those stories um, have, because he have he was, you written he, them down in anywhere at all? Or are they still <laughs> just in here? I I have I have written them down. You can't you know I my nobody's going to take away my genealogist card. Um, <laughs> they are they are written down. Uh, he he has long since passed away, right. as has his wife, and mm-hmm. uh, I, I I don't know how to get in touch with his children, uh, even yeah. if they're still around, because his his yeah. children might be uh, you know probably up there, and um, mm-hmm. and so. What I, was I've his got, reason for not wanting it told? He he just didn't want 
want it to be glorified. He just didn't right. want that. Oh, uh, and okay. there was there was just so much death and so mm-hmm. much suffering that he he just would rather focus on. He's like, you, you young people should focus on something else instead wow. of looking at the past, looking at these horrible things that happened. And, right. uh, and, I, and I think we have to respect those wishes mm-hmm. to a certain extent, right? That's Especially right. they they served and they get to they get to determine how their legacy is remembered. So if somebody, um, you know like in Laura's example, doesn't want to be necessarily lumped in with, with the brave guys, then we can, we can honor that to a certain extent. Right. And just like my, right. my grandfather who, you know, w- you know, just said, Hey, this, this is how I contributed. We all contributed. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that was his contribution to the war. And that's, that's why my dad's little brother was born during the war um, because he was able to come home when other guys yeah. weren't able to come home yeah. uh, because of the, the nature of his service in the military. Exactly. And then you've got this other guy who's, whose name I'm not going to mention, mm-hmm. um, uh, I'm being very cautious not to say right. her name, um, mm-hmm. you know, who, who just said, yeah, I, I served and was willing to tell people, yeah, I served in World War II. I was at the Battle of the Bulge, but never would get into the details mm-hmm. because of the, the trauma that he experienced. And that's that's true for a lot of veterans, regardless of when they served my grandfather my great great grandfather that served in the civil war was a disabled veteran and never was able really to to work a normal day the rest of his life um and that's not something that he was real proud about um the fact that he he couldn't lay down he had to he had to sleep in a chair and just because of the the, the damage that had been Mm -hmm. done to him during the course of the war and so anyway yeah my my dad my dad served in uh, in vietnam and we didn't learn till quite recently some of the the missions. He was a flight engineer, uh, C-130s. They would go up and they would um, refuel um, in midair <laughs> our planes. And he never really talked about it, but we learned that some of the major battles, um, some of the major offenses that we took to, you know, he was involved <laughs> and we didn't know and my mom didn't know you know and she 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 remembers hearing about these stories you know on the news had no idea till decades later that my dad was involved with those and so i think sometimes it's just very hard for them to talk about so if you do have living unfortunately my, my dad has passed but he did spend a lot of time talking to my son my son just just turned 18 and I know that he knows a lot of stories because he would just sit and my dad would talk to him. And so I've tried to encourage him to maybe write down some of those things. And, and part of them right now, he feels like, well, no, he told me that and he didn't tell anybody else. And, and so I need to convince him to write those things down because, you know, <laughs> it, yeah. it, it, the stories will be lost. Yes, Mary. I, I, I had the, that B-17 crew I was working on. Um, eight of them, 10 men on that mission are deceased, but two, and actually when I started researching, two were still alive. And I spoke with one of them. I mean, his wife said, oh, he won't talk about it. He never talks about any of that uh-huh. stuff. And he and I talked many times and, you know, he began to tell me things. He says, I've not ever told anybody this. And yeah. I was a complete stranger. I mean, I've never seen him. Just That's probably why he could talk to you. Mm-hmm. But I, yeah, I think that was it. Yeah. That he could tell me things that he didn't want to color his wife or his children's right. image of him. I think. Yeah. And yeah. and you know what? It's interesting you say that because when I and I had put it in a chat that I was able to talk to three survivors of the plane crash my relative was on. And he ended up writing an article for the group 390, whatever it was, bomb group. And his family did not know, but me inquiring and us finding him. And I thought, you know, I freaked out. Wait, wait, there's three survivors wait, that were on the plane that crashed, yeah. you know, going through all of that. But his family did not know anything. Uh-huh. Just like you were saying, did not know, but he ended up writing an article um, for the, you know, the little bomb group that they were in and stuff. And he sent me two pictures of him and my relative oh. standing in front of the plane. And this was in Germany, but my relative was in the Pacific first and then went to Europe, uh, was with the fifth and then went with the eighth. And um, 
but yeah, we got pictures. So, and of course I did all this happen way before I was born, but <laughs> my mother, <laughs> my, not, my mother remembered Calvin when he came home on R and R yeah. when he was switching from the Pacific and then going to Europe. And my grandmother made this statement that he was, he went around to every, all the family's house. This is in Michigan and a Benzie in Manistee County. He went to all the family houses mm. and my mom's house was the last house. And when he left out the door, my grandmother said, he's not coming back. We're not going to see him again. No. And we did. They did. Oh, that's very yeah. sad. Yeah. yeah. She knew because he went from house the house to house to everybody in the community, oh, gosh. you know, the family and whatever yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. So they have a little memorial on him up in, I want to say Manistee, but Bear Lake, um, you know, because he was out of Bear Lake and stuff. So oh. real cool. And his track record at the high school has not been beaten yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. well, David, is there any anything that maybe that we haven't spoken about that you would like to just end on um, as far as researching? Yeah, you know, I was just thinking you know, how important these stories are. I mean, one of the things that um, where I work in Boston in EHS, I mean, we've been around for 175 years, but we're always looking for donations. And so many times you hear people, like a neighbor passing away and there, there's letters that are found and documents. Mm -hmm. And we're actively and have been actively collecting military items you know letters diaries it doesn't have to be heavily genealogy because think about a military collection i mean your ancestors letters or the letters that we have at nehs mention other people other than just yeah. the person in general and yeah. you think about the complexity of how many stories are there the most heart-wrenching thing for me as a genealogist is looking at the civil war pensions for mothers and fathers mm -hmm. because they had to include Cherry, a letter from the parent uh that they got from the son that died stating that enclosed is five dollars but it, and these letters are never returned and right. they're in these mothers and fathers so I'll tell you if i mm -hmm. if i could retire now and go to washington and just transcribe the letters out of that they, they would be kleenex would have to be on hand because they're heart-wrenching yeah yeah um, can it, i say something to that um we, uh, I work in a county archive, Houston County, Tennessee archives, and um, recently we received a donation because like you, David, we receive donations of anything, especially local. Uh -huh. um, we received a donation of some, and I don't know if I mentioned it here last few weeks or not, but um, of some military stuff from and, and of course as a genealogist family historian i'm thinking how can a family not want this stuff but right. anyway right. It, mm -hmm. was, it was left in the house and the family didn't want it and mm -hmm. it was a gentleman who was member who was a member of the golden knights paratroopers hmm. and it was his medals it's his oh, certificates, wow. it's photographs of him jumping out of planes and just on and on and on mm. and so we have that and then the other thing you were mentioning david about other people being mentioned in my dad's records, like I said, he kept everything. And this stuff probably is, of course, copies, but doesn't survive in St. Louis. It probably was not survived the fire. But there are things like this. And I don't know if you can see, but these are, this is a document from 1960 when he enlisted. But it, does, it, it lists him here, but it lists all, there's two columns of other people. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is, yeah. you know, and so, and so now I'm thinking as a genealogist, as an archivist, I'm thinking, how can I get this information out there so that the people that belong to these other families that are listed to know about it? And that's true. I mean, that's one of the things I find social media great because mm -hmm. say if your dad was in a, you know, a unit, like you say, yeah. overseas, you know where he was, you can create a free Facebook group yeah. and oh, share that true. and try to come the camaraderie. I mean, especially with World War II. One of my good buddies is 96 years old. His name's Horace. He's friends with me on Facebook because I started a Pearl Harbor survivors group. After the association disbanded, I wanted family members to be able to get and be able to congregate and share pictures and stories. So I put it out there about gosh, seven or eight years ago and it's going strong. But Horace joined, but he's a veteran from Pearl Harbor. He was on wow. the USS Phoenix. 96 he chats with me once a week oh, wow. and uh you know he you know he, he said the horrors of pearl harbor were oh, the most yes. heart-wrenching thing to actually see 
because they, they felt so helpless. They couldn't do oh, anything. Goodness. I like that idea. I'm sure that there are Facebook groups for so many different yes. uh, regiments, battalions, whatever you want to call, you know, for whatever, wherever your mm -hmm. or specific battles, all those types of things where we can share that information with family that, that uh, perhaps don't know the information that you have. So I think that's a wonderful place to share as well. So, oh, we could talk about this all night. <laughs> we really could. We could talk about this all night. We've all got wonderful stories. David, thank you so much. I know oh. you've given me lots of good ideas to, mm -hmm. to look for records for my, my veteran ancestors. So I really, really appreciate you. And I appreciate all the panel and all your wonderful stories and the, and the photos that you've shared and the documents that you've shared. We'd like to thank all of our veterans for your service. And um, we are grateful. To, to have the country that we have because of your service. And with that, we'll say goodnight and we'll see you next time on Gen Friends. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.